안녕하세요. You are going to learn how to make adjective close modifiers in the past tense and some irregular conjugation rules in this video. Let's start. Let's learn about adjective close modifier in the past tense. It's an adjective in the past tense. Let's learn the basic rule. You can relax. Because this one is exactly the same as the first rule of the verb close modifier in the past tense. So when you want to pick one of the verb close modifier in the past tense rules, which one would be economical to pick? Yes, the first one. Or you don't have to pick one of them. Because you can use this one to both a verb close modifier and adjective close modifier in the past tense. So technically, there's only one rule to remember for the verb close modifier in the past tense. How about that? Yes, this one also has the nuance of not anymore. Then why do adjective close modifiers not have a rule which express just simple past tense without extra information as verb close modifiers have? Well, maybe because adjectives are usually used to describe a current status of a person or a thing and give extra information about them. For example, when we want to say something was good, it's in the past tense. We used past tense because that thing is not good anymore. It's the same in English. Please understand that way. The tree which was very small got bigger or has got bigger. We told you that you can always use the past tense in Korean whenever you think about present perfect tense in English. In English, present perfect tense is used when the event happened in the past but it has a present consequences. But in Korean, you need to focus on the moment when the action actually took place in the past. Let's rearrange the words. The tree is the subject, but which is very small part comes before the subject the tree because it modifies the tree. Got bigger is a predicative part, therefore it comes at the end of the sentence. You might say that got is a, actually a verb and bigger is a modifier which modifies the verb got. Yes, okay, we accept that. You can think of it that way too. So, bigger got would be fine too. Which was very small? The tree. Bigger got. Let's translate it together. It's too easy, right? Which was very small part is a close. Therefore, you also need to rearrange the words inside of it. But there is nothing to rearrange. We don't need which. Was is nothing but the past tense indicator. So, we don't need it either. And an adverb very modifies the adjective small. So we just need to translate very small. But small should be in the past tense. Very is aju, aju. Or you can use 되게, 되게 in spoken Korean. The basic form of the adjective small is 작다. 작다 and 작 is the stem. Since 작 has a vowel and a final consonant, you need to add a done sound to turn the close into the adjective close modifier in the past tense. 작 a done. 작 a done. 아주 작았던. 아주 작았던. The tree. Tree is 나무 나무 in Korean. Let's add a subject particle 가 나무가 나무가 아주 작았던 나무가 The tree which was very small in the past is too easy, right? So we put something new on this page. Let's learn how to say got bigger. It's a new thing, so listen carefully. When you want to say to get comparative, for example, get better, get younger, get longer. Or when you want to say to become adjective, for example, become difficult, become possible, become beautiful. You can add this ending to a stem of an adjective. Let's take a look at the basic form of these endings. 아지다, 어지다. 해지다. We are not going to use the 다 sound anyway. Therefore, 지 sound is the common part. 
and the same rule that we used when we add o yo, a yo, or he yo sound to the stem of a verb or an adjective applies here too. You will know what it means. So when the stem has a or o vowel, we use a ji. When the stem has the rest of the vowels, we use o ji. When the adjective has hada part, we use he ji sound. It's clear? Okay. Since a ji, o ji, he ji is not a perfect ending, you still need to combine them with the another fix suffix yo. They all have ji sound with e vowel at the end. So you add o yo sound. Got it? A ji, o yo. A ji, o yo. But one more time. G sound doesn't have a final consonant, so you need to combine G and O sound together. G O, G O, G O, G O. It becomes G O sound with a YO vowel. So finally, it becomes A J O Y O, A J O Y O, stem of an adjective plus A J O Y O. Means get comparative or become adjective. Let's apply this to an adjective small. The stem is chak. Since chak has a vowel, you just need to add a jo yo. Okay? Chak a jo yo. Chak a jo yo. Which means get smaller. It's not that difficult, right? It looks complicated, but you just need to put a ji, o ji, or he ji sound in the middle between a stem and o yo sound. That's it. Let's put it in the past tense then. Got bigger is in the past tense. So we need to add o o yo, o so yo to a ji. Just like we put a verb in the past tense with a so yo. Also yo or hesso yo. Since G sound of a G has e vowel, you need to add also yo, also yo. But again, because G sound doesn't have a final consonant, you need to combine G and ot sound. G ot, G ot, G ot, G ot. It becomes Jot sound with yo vowel. A jot so yo. A jot so yo. If you add the stem of the adjective small, chak, to a jot so yo, it becomes chak a jot so yo. Chak a jot so yo. Which means got smaller in the past tense. Got smaller. Okay? It's nothing. You can figure out the rest of them yourself. You know this already. Okay, then let's say got bigger or bigger got together. The basic form of the adjective big is 크다, 크다. The stem is 크 and it has a vowel 으. It's not a or o vowel, therefore you should add 어졌어요 with 어 sound. 어졌어요, 크. But the stem doesn't have a final consonant. Its sound is supposed to be combined with the next block, o. But there is no compound vowel which sounds like u plus o, uo. No, there is no compound like that. So the o sound, which is considered stronger, observes u sound completely. So u vowel sound disappears. And only o vowel sound survives, so it's not kuo. It's just ko. Ko just so yo. Ko just so yo. Got bigger, okay? Which very small. Which very was small. Aju, chagatton, the tree. Namuga, got bigger. 
커졌어요. 커졌어요. 아주 작았던 나무가 커졌어요. The tree which was very small got bigger. You learned very useful things on this page. Let's learn about regular conjugation rules. Yes, it is a rule too. We will learn irregular conjugation rules we can think of right now. Maybe there can be more, one or two. We'll learn whenever we see the new one. Don't worry about it. First of all, in Korean, there are a lot of endings that are used to express emotion, respect, suggestion, intention, confirmation, or modification. So please keep that in mind that we are not just talking about the case where a verb or an adjective meets oyo or ayo sound. These regular conjugation rules apply when a stem with a certain final consonant meets a certain initial consonant or a certain following block. But since we've been learning predicates using oyo or ayo sound and modifiers using un or nn sound, let's see the examples related to those. Verb and adjective conjugation rule is all about the final consonant of a last letter of the stem and the initial u, the empty consonant in the following block. Most of them. Please take a look at the table on this page. Did you just curse? Let me tell you something. We know you guys have good memory, but even in Korea, there are not so many people who can tell these rules exactly. They just know because they are native speakers. So, we'll explain about these rules on this page, but do not try too hard to memorize them. Just learn it by doing, that's just fine. The reason why we are explaining about this is because there are quite many verbs and adjectives conjugated irregularly. So, we don't want you to think it's weird every time you see irregular conjugations. Okay, let's take a look at them on by one very quick. The first one is a verb, walk. We've seen this several times, so you already know that. The basic form of this verb is 걷다, and the stem is 걷 with the d consonant in the final. When the last letter of the stem has final d consonant, and the following block has initial u, the empty consonant, final d consonant in the last letter of the stem turns into l. Consent, l consent. So let's add all yo to the stem cut. All yo also has u consent as an initial. When cut combines with all yo, the final two consent of the stem turns into l consent. So it becomes kol all yo. Instead of cut or yo. You've seen this a lot, so let's move on very quick. Let's see the next one. Heal. It's a verb. It's not da. Not da in Korean. The stem is not. And it has s consonant, which sounds like Romanized alphabet T as a final. When the last letter of the stem has final s consonant and the following block has initial u, the empty consonant, the final s consonant in the stem disappears. That's it. It just disappears. So when the stem not combines with a yo sound, because a yo also has initial u consonant, the final s consonant disappears and it becomes just na a yo instead of not a yo. Okay? Don't think too much, just nod your head twice and keep moving. Let's see the next one. The verb call. The basic form is 부르다. 부르다. And the stem is 부르, 부르. When the last letter of the stem has l sound, it's not l consonant, it's a letter l sound with u vowel. And it meets a 
o or at ot sound in the next block. Be careful, this time it's not just initial u consonant, it's particularly a o or at ot sound. This l consonant appears in the first block as a final and u vowel of the last letter of the stem l disappears. Again, u vowel of l sound disappears and only the consonant remains. So when the stem buru combines with the ending o yo, the first letter bu becomes pul pul and the last letter of the stem l becomes just consonant l li without u vowel therefore pul plus l consonant combines with o yo sound and needless to say l consonant li consonant combines with o yo sound so it becomes pul lo yo pul lo yo instead of pul o yo okay this one sounds a little bit tricky we know but you've seen this before okay let's see the next one the verb to know it's alda and the stem is al with the final consonant l when the last letter of the stem has l consonant as a final there are two rules alda is a verb and its stem has a final consonant therefore when you want to use it in a verb clause modifier in the past tense you can add un sound to the stem al but when the last letter of the stem has l consonant and the following block has un sound final l consonant in the stem disappears and un sound turns into a final n consonant and it's added to the last letter of the stem so l consonant of al sound is gone and nu consonant is added as a new final instead of adding un sound to the stem so it becomes an instead of al un okay next one is with the same verb no alda when you want to make a verb close modifier in the present simple tense you need to add nun sound to the stem right when the final l consonant meets nun sound in the following block, the final l consonant of the stem disappears. So alda becomes anun without l consonant in the stem. Let's see the next one. Help. It's a verb. The basic form of it is topta. Top Da. The stem is top with p consonant. This one is a little bit tricky too. Well, that's right. Most of the irregular conjugation rules are tricky. When the stem has only one letter, like this verb, with p consonant as a final, and it meets a or a sound with a yang vowel a, the final b consonant disappears and o vowel the same yang vowel appears and is added to a or at sound or when it meets o or ot sound with the in vowel o the final b consonant disappears and u vowel the same in vowel appears and is added to o or ot sound a little bit complicated isn't it yes this one is the most complicated one so when topta combines with 
are yo to be in the present simple tense with the honorific suffix yo. Top, the stem top becomes to without final bu consonant, and a yo becomes wa yo with o vowel added to a yo. So to wa yo, to wa yo instead of top. Ah, yo, top ah, yo is wrong. Okay, let's see the last one. This one is a pretty much the same as the previous one, but it's a little bit simpler. It's an adjective, cute. 귀엽다, 귀엽다. The stem is 귀엽. It has two letters, and the last letter of it, 엽, has 부 consonant as a final. When the stem has more than one letter with the final 부 consonant in the last letter of it, and it meets u consonant in the following block. The final bu consonant disappears, and u vowel is added to u consonant in the following block. The easier part is that we always add u this time. You don't have to consider if it's in vowel or yang vowel. So when the stem kui yup combines with o yo sound the stem becomes qui yo without final bu consonant and o yo becomes u o yo wo yo with u vowel sound added qui yo wo yo qui yo wo yo okay that's it let's stop talking about this while we're explaining this, we realize again that it's almost impossible for you to remember this. It's too complicated to remember. Plus, what makes us really crazy is there are exceptions to this too, again. Yeah, I know, even I want to break something right now. But at least it is necessary for you to know there is something like this. That's enough. Let's get familiar with this by practicing together. Or you can also just remember only the forms that you use in a real life conversation without thinking about conjugation rules. That's okay too, no problem. Let's see a simple example for irregular conjugation. Let's see the English sentence first. The man whom I know worked for a big company before. Yeah, this is simple. First of all, the subject is the man. And whom I know part modifies the subject, the man. Before is a time-related word. We don't have to know where the full of big company part belongs to grammatically, but we know for sure it's something directly related to the verb work. Whom I know, the man, before, for a big company, worked. Whom I know. We don't need whom since the entire whom I know part modifies the noun the man. We don't have any grammatical element in Korean like that. Let's forget about it. I, 제가, know. The basic form of a verb know is 알다. 알다. The stem is 알. And it has a final consonant, l. We need to add nun to the stem of a verb to use it as a verb close modifier in the present simple tense. When the stem has l consonant as a final and it meets nun sound in the following block, the final l consonant of the stem disappears. So it becomes a nun, a nun, instead of al nun. Okay? Now you see how it works. Whom I know. 제가 아는. 제가 아는. The man. Man is 남자. When you talk about someone whom you and the listener both know, you can translate the definite article the into 그. That's okay. 그 남자. 그 남자. The man is a subject. Since the subject of the clause 
and the subject of the main sentence are different. You can add the same particle to both of them. But let's just add the auxiliary particle, 는. Let's not talk about the nuance here because it will take extra minutes. Before, 전 is the translation of the adverb before. But 전 is a noun, which means earlier point than the time you are indicating, not an adverb. Therefore, let's add a time-related particle, 에, and make it look like an adverb. 전에, 전에. For big company, we can see the preposition for. We might be able to use 을 or 를, 위해서, for the translation for. We'll see. Big is an adjective and it modifies the noun company. The basic form of the adjective big is 크다. 크다. 크 is the stem and it doesn't have any final consonant. Therefore, you just need to add final n consonant to turn it into adjective modifier, right? It's simple. So it's 큰, 큰. Company is 회사, 큰 회사, a big company. For the formal block 사 of 회사 doesn't have any final consonant. So let's add 를 and 위해 or 위해서. 큰 회사를 위해서. Work. The basic form of a verb walk is 일하다. The stem is 일하. It's in the past tense. Therefore, you need to add the ending 했어요. 일했어요. 일했어요. Whom I know. 제가 아는. The man. 그 남자는 before 전에 for a big company 큰 회사를 위해서 worked 일했어요 제가 아는 그 남자는 전에 큰 회사를 위해서 일했어요 It sounds fine, but we'll give you one tip In Korean, you don't really say you work for the company You just say you work in the company. It is okay to use 을 or 를 위해서 for the translation of the English preposition for most of the time, but work for the company is the English way to mean to be employed by the company. When you mean employed in Korean, it sounds natural to use 에서, which is used to indicate the place where the action is taking place. 제가 아는 그 남자는 전에 큰 회사에서 일했어요. 제가 아는 그 남자는 전에 큰 회사에서 일했어요. Now you can see the Korean don't really work for the company. They just work in the company. That's great. Let's see one more example and wrap up this lesson. My friend who lives in Seoul found a cute restaurant that sells delicious Mexican food. Please understand if it sounds a little bit weird. Please don't ask what a cute restaurant is. You know, cute. We just try to put as many verbs and adjectives that conjugate regularly as possible. My friend found a restaurant. This sentence basically in the English sentence pattern number two. Subject plus verb plus object. So we can see that a restaurant is an object of the entire sentence. Let's rearrange the words. What is the subject? Yes, my friend is the subject. But it's modified by who lives in Seoul part. So who lives in Seoul comes first and then my friend comes next. That sells delicious Mexican food part modifies a cute restaurant. So that sells delicious Mexican food part comes first 
and then a cute restaurant part comes next and the verb found comes at the end of the sentence who lives in Seoul my friend that sells delicious Mexican food a cute restaurant found it's a little bit wordy sentence but you can make a Korean sentence like this without a problem based on what you've learned from us who lives in Seoul we need to rearrange the words inside of the clothes a little bit we don't need who so just leave it there in Seoul comes first and a verb leave comes later in Seoul the action of living takes place in Seoul so let's use the particle 에서 actually you can use 에 with the verb leave but let's just stick to the rule let's not make an exception so 서울에서 leaves the basic form of the verb leave is 살다 the stem is 살 in order to turn it into the form that you can use in the verb clause modifier in the present simple tense you need to add 는 sound to the stem according to the basic rule but when the stem has 르 consonant as a final and it combines with 는 sound the final 르 consonant disappears so it becomes 사는 사는 instead of 살는 서울에서 사는 who lives in Seoul 서울에서 사는 my friend 제 친구가 yes you can use the auxiliary particle 는 but it would sound like there is another friend who lives in another city found something else and my friend who lives in Seoul found a restaurant it will sound like you are comparing so let's just use the subject particle ka that's fine we are emphasizing the subject specifying it with who lives in Seoul part anyway 서울에서 사는 제 친구가 my friend who lives in Seoul that sells delicious Mexican food Mexican food is the object of the verb sell therefore you can add the object particle 을 or 를 to it keep that in mind let's rearrange the words in this clause let's ignore that because we don't need it an adjective delicious comes before Mexican food part because it modifies Mexican food and the verb sell comes at the end of the sentence it's easy that delicious Mexican food sells the basic form of an adjective delicious is 맛있다 맛있다 and 맛있 is the stem since the last letter of the stem it has a final consonant according to the basic rule in order to make an adjective modifier you're supposed to add un sound to the stem because the last letter of the stem has a final consonant but when the basic form has it da part and the stem has it sound nun sound should be added instead of un sound it's an irregular conjugation exception rule so it becomes mat in nun Masinnen instead of mat it un. Okay? Masinnen, mat in nun is correct. Mexican. Well, you can use the same sound Mexican. Or you can use Mexico too, which is the name of the country. Mexico. Mexico. Food is umshik. Let's add the object particle. 을, since Mexican food is the object of the verb sell in this clause. So, 맛있는 Mexico 음식 을, delicious Mexican food, sells. This is the verb of the clause modifier in the present simple tense. The basic form of the verb sell is 팔다. 팔다. The stem is 팔. 
when the stem has l consonant as a final and it combines with n sound, the final l consonant disappears. We told you. So it becomes pa n instead of pal n. Pa n is correct. Delicious. Masin n. Mexican food. Mexico umsik ul. Sells. Pa n. Masin n. Mexico umsik ul. Pa n. A cute restaurant. Cute here is an adjective modifier. The basic form of the adjective cute is kyopta. Kyopta. Kyop is the stem and it has b consonant as a final. Since the last letter of the stem has a final consonant, un sound should be added to turn the stem into an adjective modifier. Kyop un. But when the final b consonant of the stem meets initial u consonant in the next block, the final b consonant disappears, and u vowel is added to u consonant, so it becomes kyo un, kyo un instead of kyo un. Okay, kyo un is correct. Restaurant is just restaurant, restaurant. It's an object of the entire sentence. Let's add the object particle, ul, restaurant ul. Found. The basic form of the verb find is chatta. Let's put it in the past tense. Let's add. 앗어요 to the stem 찾 찾았어요 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 Who lives in Seoul? 서울에서 사는 My friend 제 친구가 That delicious Mexican food sells 맛있는 멕시칸 음식을 파는 A cute restaurant 귀여운 레스토랑을 found 찾았어요. 서울에서 사는 제 친구가 맛있는 멕시코 음식을 파는 귀여운 레스토랑을 찾았어요. Wow, see how much you can do. I'm thrilled. This is the end of YouTube version lesson 6 part 5. You're going to learn how to make close modifiers in the future tense in the upcoming videos. 그럼 다음 비디오에서 만나요. 안녕히 계세요.